Hey there, in this time lapse, I'm going to change things up a bit. Let's take a look. So the first change that I'm sure you've already noticed is that I've given both our reference photo as well as my palette with some premixed colors on it. More on this in a moment. Nevertheless, the intent is for these to serve as a point of reference as we work our way through the study. The second change is the process in which I'm attempting to paint. I've never been much of a wet on wet painter, but with this study, I wanted to take it as far as I could in one session. One problem I've always had with the Alla Prima style is that it always turns into a muddy mess. So with that in mind, we'll finish right before we cross that line and follow up with the second part. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss it. Also, there's a third change I've contemplated that I'll discuss at the end. Now that's out of the way, let's dig into this study. It's common practice within the oil painting community to always start with your darkest darks. I've varied on occasion, but for this study, I wanted the wave to be our focal point, so we'll nail it before moving on. Our darkest dark is a mixture of burnt umber, phthalo green, the oxide purple, and titanium white. As we work our way from the base of the wave to the crest, we'll change the mixture by adding cobalt blue, yellow ochre, and more titanium white. Painting water can often feel like a daunting task, but it really shouldn't be because all water acts the exact same way. Let me explain. The color of water is really only affected by three things light, depth, and obstruction. So with our study, the wave's base will be darker because of the depth and the lack of light penetration. As we work up to the crest, we lose depth and gain light, so that's where the transition into those brilliant backlit waves we all love. Speaking of which, stay tuned for a special guest paint will be used to emphasize the point. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're fairly new to painting and you're having issues mixing colors, Make sure you check out the link for my video on effortless color mixing. Okay, let's slow it down and take a look at the next area of our study, the white water. White water or foam is probably one of the most fun things to paint on a wave. There's really no wrong or right way to do it. There are a few things to keep in mind, such as natural lighting and direction, but overall, it's pretty stress-free. I've started here with a mixture of titanium white, cerulean blue, Viridian and a dash of ivory black and dioxine purple. Within the scene, you'll see this area is in the shadow of the wave, so that's what gives it its bluish tone. As we move out of the shadows and progress towards the sun's reflection, this color will lighten up, even taking on an orangish appearance. The first key to painting realistic white water is the understanding it's not always just white. The next area addressed is the sand. Boy howdy, we got our work cut out for us. Not only do we have to contend with the sand, but there's also wet sand, rippling water, and the sun's reflection. I've started here with a mixture of titanium white, yellow ochre, cobalt blue, and dioxide purple. Although this mixture would greatly change throughout this area, it's often reserved primarily for the shadows. The closer we move towards the sun's reflection, the more we begin to pick up those brilliant oranges and yellows, which are a variant of titanium white, lemon yellow, cadmium orange, and a dash of cerulean blue to desaturate. Finally, we get to our background, which is odd because I generally start with the background and move forward. Nevertheless, I told you we were changing things up in this video. For the most part, our background colors are some of the same mixtures we've already used. We'll paint the places between the waves with the orange mixture and the incoming waves with the purplish hue. The only change I found was adding a bit of ultramarine blue to darken up some of the areas of the waves and to the far edges of the scene where the sun's reflection is less noticeable. We'll go ahead and put this uh, into overdrive here so we don't make too long of a video. But don't forget, I'll introduce those special guest paints once they come about. Uh, make sure you're looking out for them. Alright, so for our first special guest paint, it's a paint by Gamblin. 
It's part of the Radiant series. This is a Radiant Green. Uh, I generally don't use paint straight out of the tube, but when you're trying to get that backlit color on a wave, well, there's nothing better than this Radiant series from Gamblin. Uh, just take a look and see how it changes the color of that area. Our final guest color is a color by Winsor & Newton, June Brilliant, kind of a mixture between the orangish and yellow. I've used it here to kind of really emphasize those sunlit areas and uh, it's a pretty decent color for doing just that. As I'm wrapping up this background area, this is one of the particular areas I spoke of earlier about contemplating changing. Uh, the incoming waves weren't reading correctly for me. I don't know whether it's just me or whether uh, you see it as well, but I was contemplating it changing to a nice crisp horizon line, sort of like what I did in this painting from last year. Let me know in the comments section what you think about that, whether it's reading correctly for you or whether a nice horizon might uh, complete the scene. So as always, it's been a pleasure of getting to show my work with everyone and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make sure you give me a comment. Let me know about that horizon change also. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the second part of this. I'm looking forward to completing this little study and seeing where it turns out to. Until next time, happy painting.